The simple answer. Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today, we're diving into the captivating world of electrical conductivity. We'll be exploring why materials conduct electricity, identifying the most conductive materials. So, let's get started. How do materials conduct electricity? At the atomic level, materials that conduct electricity have free electrons that can move easily from atom to atom. This movement of electrons allows for the flow of electric current. Now, you may be wondering, which materials are the most conductive? The answer lies in the classification of materials into three categories, conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Conductors, such as metals, are the most efficient at conducting electricity. This is because they have a high density of free electrons that can move through the material without much resistance. The most conductive material is silver, followed by copper and then gold. So why is silver the most conductive? Firstly, silver has a relatively high density of free electrons. In its atomic structure, silver atoms have only one valence electron in their outermost shell. These valence electrons are not tightly bound to the atoms and are free to move throughout the material. Secondly, silver has a crystal lattice structure that allows for efficient electron movement. The crystal structure of silver provides a network of closely packed atoms, enabling a smooth flow of electrons with minimal obstruction or resistance. It's important to note that while silver is the most conductive material, it is not always the most practical choice for everyday applications. Silver is relatively expensive compared to other conductive metals like copper, has low mechanical wear resistance and a low softening temperature. Therefore, copper is often preferred for widespread use in electrical wiring and other applications where cost effectiveness is crucial. So why is copper the most popular conductor? Copper is indeed one of the most abundant and widely available metals on Earth. Its abundance can be attributed to a combination of geological and chemical factors. Firstly, copper is an element that is naturally occurring in the Earth's crust. It is formed through various geological processes, including volcanic activity, hydrothermal deposits, and sedimentary rocks. Over millions of years, copper ores have been concentrated in certain regions, making them economically viable for mining and extraction. Secondly, copper has a relatively low reactivity. It does not readily react with air, water, or most non-acidic substances. This property allows copper to resist corrosion and degradation over time. As a result, copper deposits have been preserved and accumulated in the Earth's crust for extended periods, increasing its overall abundance. So if gold is the third best conductor, and is very expensive, is it used as a conductor? Well, yes. Gold's conductivity, combined with its unique properties of reliability, low resistance, and corrosion resistance, makes it valuable for specific applications. One of the main applications of gold as a conductor is in high-quality electronic connectors and contacts. Gold's resistance to corrosion ensures reliable and long-lasting connections, especially in environments with high humidity or exposure to harsh conditions. This is particularly important in industries such as aerospace, telecommunications, and high-end audio equipment. Gold is also used in thin layers for electrical contacts on computer chips and integrated circuits. Its conductivity allows for efficient signal transmission within these complex electronic components, ensuring accurate and reliable performance. Moving on to semiconductors, they have a moderate level of electrical conductivity. Materials like silicon and germanium fall into this category. What's fascinating about semiconductors is that their conductivity can be altered by factors like temperature and doping. Semiconductors form the backbone of modern electronics, such as computer chips. Their ability to switch between conducting and non-conducting states allows for the creation of transistors and other essential electronic components. Finally, we have insulators. These materials, like rubber and plastic, have tightly bound electrons, making it difficult for them to move. As a result, insulators do not conduct electricity well and are often used to provide electrical insulation and protect against shocks. I hope you found this information fascinating and enlightening. Stay curious. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.